while while we were we were we were in a like a basic bus a yacht. I just started to beat her up until until I had to in the freeway being for no keep her go bus because I'm angry. So that is the only way for me to to respond. Hello guys, how are you? Um, my name is Mpumi Umtweni Shabalala. I am a musician. I'm a child of God. I'm a mother. Uh, I was born in Middleburg. Grew up in Henrina with um, some reasons. But at the moment, I just want to introduce myself. I'm a mother. At the same time, I'm a wife. I'm a second born at home with two siblings. Yeah, and I'm a musician as well. So, yeah, I'm just here to let you know about actually who Mpumi is. Mpumi was a very um, fragile child when she was born. Not only fragile, but very strong at the same time with a gift, so many gifts as actually. So, Okulawam. Um, I grew up umdwana o apigo I was like, no, this is not a child of mine. My dad decided not to raise me as his own, with some reasons I don't know. So uma ngkula, ngkula umdwana hamba sala because um, my mom was unstable when it comes to klalekaya. So klala ngklalekaya, we ngklale no gogo, we ngklale no koko. I don't know if. You guys can understand that one. So, at the age of five, my mom decided to um, to get married to Baba, my stepdad, which is Petros Mtweni. Then we had to move from Merube to Whitbank because my mom got married. My big brother decided to stay in Ogogo. Normally, in Zulu, and in a, the first one has to remain in Ogogo. So, um, yeah, it happened that I had to move with my mom. <clears throat> my mom is happy, happily, I mean, she's happily married. Um, having me, at that time, my baby sister was not born. So I was the only child there. Abused began. Meshaiwa every day. So Meshaiwa, had, we had to move from Womakeluan and sleep there. Sometimes we would sleep at the streets. So, a lot of things happened. Sometimes you had to move. Yeah, I think anger, it got a lot of the anger issue when it comes to me. Because I know, Woody, if it's Friday, um, because my mom was over shy on Alice's cut, so she won't be able to take care of me. So, <laughs> and then um, that's where rape began because it was to a certain um, place where you're not supposed to be as a child but you don't know then I got raped first time at the age of 8 um, I could not say anything because my mother was also like I develop an anger as well because um you know when you are beaten non-stop you 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 find yourself not having abantu ongakulmanabo and then the only way for her to express how she felt unfortunately kwaqalangami because the moment i had to say a word to her she would beat me up so not only that i was raped also now I'm experiencing the mother that is angry or keep it anger game. So um, I was raped at the age of eight, first time. Um, life goes on. I could not say anything. I would say that after, because normally, you know, when you're young, your mom decides to bath you. So now Uzo understand that when 
she's busy with your body. You could you know something is wrong. She kept on asking, and then I, did, I chose not to say anything because already I'm angry. Um, so I think, okay, no. I would come to a point where now I have to protect myself at the age of what? Eight. So I would go to school, not function quite well because a lot of things are just happening. And the teachers can see and tell that something is wrong, but I would really, really try to cover it, to cover it up. Um, finally, my mom got to a point where she received Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Now, things are quite hectic. Now, if you would ask me, I would say, there was no God at all. Because I, I, I never saw any, anything like that in my life. In Bilo, it continues, continues, and then at the age of 15, fast forward, I got raped again by a best friend of mine. He decided to come and like fetch me. Um, now we're just driving over because Gubo, apparently they were rich, so we'll figure out who's on mode, but he had his own agendas at the same time. I got raped by him. Second time, Angi um, I'm like, okay, it's fine. I'll just get over it. It's okay because it happened the first time. So I got over it. So Ganti, things are just, you know, isn't this a day, guy? Because it is you, it is you. So now it continues. Um, I decide to forgive him. Um, because he's my friend. But the abuse I got paid very high because Mama was a was a shy bagachalo. So now I have a mother to protect because I'm 15, and now he she's pregnant. And now I'm watching my stepdad beating my mom while she's pregnant. And even the streets, Beba Sazukuti, Leandu, Elapa, Inlu, Yembi. So now Umbumi has a mentality of um, protecting herself, right? So now that is me fighting with people because I, I'm not saying anything to anyone. The only thing that I know is that my mom decided to teach me how to pray, but not how to express how I feel. So I would watch my dad beating her. But there was a time where I decided to fight with my stepdad because I felt it was too much. And I could not say anything, not even at, like on the family, aside in La Mama, because my mom told me not to say anything to anyone. Even aside, not to any, like it's a secret that she's, she's, um, or abusive. So it's only me that knows. So that, that means I have to protect my mom. I decided to, because it was too much for me, I decided to try to kill myself. Remember, um, my dad was like, my dad is like financially, so I decided to take the medical, went to the doctor, lied. I said, no, I can't sleep and what, 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 whatever. And then he gave me whatever he had to give, which was sleeping pills, the strongest ones. So I decided to go home and drink them. I find myself at hospital. Um, question was, but why are they trying to wake me up? Because it's too much. I just want to die. That's all. Because I know that there is a God, but I can't see him at the moment. I know that there is a God who protects and covers a human being. Because the Bible says um, he knew us before we were born. And that was a huge question to me. And also... The Bible says he had plans not to harm us, but to prosper us. But at that moment, nothing made sense in my life. So I decided to drink the pills. 
um, finally I'm dying. I can feel it. I can tell the excitement of me wanting to just die was was overwhelming. So I woke up at the hospital, my mom was crying, asked me a lot of questions. Still, I can't say anything to her because I was not taught to, to express how I feel. I was taught to stand for myself, protect myself. But I couldn't because one, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a girl, so when you are a, a woman, because hence I was raped, it was easy. So now I'm coming back, my mother is trying to get all the counsel in any way possible, pastors are coming, um, praying for me, nothing could make sense, you know, went back home, now at the age of 19, I got raped again by the best friend of my grandfather. Apparently, my mom decided to go to Ang Tome, Engineering, and things. So, told Baba, Baba has been giving you know the red flags because he would touch me, but I would respond. Though I would, but I couldn't fight myself. That's when I was like, No, man. As strong as I am, it's too much. I tried for the last time to kill myself. You know, that you know that one worked because I stayed for a month at hospital. It was the whole of December um, at ICU. So happy because I couldn't express myself. So try Yeah, you must you must fight for your fight for yourself. If if someone does this to you, you must fight. And the only way to fight is not verbal. You have to fight physically. So now I had to learn to protect myself and hence I am destroying other kids. So there was a time where at the age of 19, I decided after the whole thing, uh, I think 20, I decided to join a group called Extra Organza in Whitbank, the biggest group in Whitbank because um, I used to sing at, at, at Sunday school, right? I'm going to show me cooler. Ekaya is an environment of Christians, but my mother is not saying anything about her life. So there was a girl who decided to say something to me, and at that point, I was not in the right space. Uh, So the way I responded to her was quite was not right. I, I'm not I'm not proud of it because while while we were we were, we were in a like a basic bus a I decided to beat her up until until I had to in the freeway being for no keep her go bus because I'm angry. So that is the only way for me to to respond. Oguti. Like I almost killed her. So that's when I saw that I had anger. So they took her to hospital. Now the pastor that was taking care of us had to cover me because I was supposed to be arrested. Um, um, that's when I realized how dangerous I am or I was at that time because it's not the same. So from there, he began to pay attention to me. Mm -mm. He's still my dad, actually, even if I can mention his name, so it's not a problem, Pastor Makudu. 
he decided to pay attention to me. What's he, what, what's happening? What is happening? He provoked me to an extent where I had to tell him who I am or where I come from. You know, because sometimes we focus on on the spiritual side of everything, but the heart is not in the right space. I don't know whether people get me. So I had to explain that my mom is beaten up every day. I can't live like this, whatever. I was raped and, 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 and. So now he decided to, to open a case for everybody, like the, the three guys who raped me. So we decided to take it from there. I was so happy because it was revenge. You know, Nami, finally, I'll be okay if I see them being punished. Um, we, we decided to open a case for them. Because the story was valid and we had a lawyer and everything. So when they got arrested, um, I know I was a child of God, but I think that's when... God decided to take control, full control of me. There was a day where I was, I decided to take a prayer and fasting. And then I'm telling my mom that, no, you know what? I want to go far. And then she's asking where? I'm like, no, I want to go to a prayer and fasting. She's asking how many days? I'm like, 40 days. And she's like, are you going to survive? I'm like, yeah, I think I need to do this because something is pushing me to go to a prayer. I decided to go. Um, now, healing to control along the way. Because there's a time where you need to be amongst people, but there's a time where you need to be with God because he's the owner of the heart. That's when I realized that, oh no, this Jesus that I serve is amazing. I went for prayer. Days are just, you know, I'm seeing the beauty of God. Gandhi, he is healing me. He is healing me. I'm not aware. When I began to communicate with him, he began to speak with me. So on the 20th day, I remember having that prayer and fasting. God gives me a song, Get a Man. Because that song was written a long time ago before I had to record the first album. Um, it's all I'm writing a song, reading the, the scripture of Luke chapter 20, when Jesus had to be punished, it gets a man. So Jesus said to me, please pay attention to this scripture until you get out of this place. Now I'm reading the scripture. Um, the Bible says he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, right? But when you read the scripture from the, from the book of Genesis to Luke, if you have to check, Jesus was really mistreated, but there was no line or rather what phase where they said he cried or he mourned, whatever. He never but until he got to Eketzamani. Eketzamani, the Bible says, he cried until the tears had to turn to blood. Now that means it was a pain from a long time ago until he had to say, if it's possible, let this cup pass by. So now I had to say, it gets a man, it gets a man, give on what's hand. So now Jesus had to reveal it because he was saying to me, Look, I know you had to go through this, but it's not for you. Because even if I was crucified, it was not for me, it was for you. So now I need you to understand that whatever pain that you feel, I felt it before. It's not new, but I'm here to heal you. That's when I said, oh, get the money, because I could not put words. 
Kule scripture seket a man. I could not say more. I could not say more because of the pain that he went through. I can see the cross. I can see a Calvary. I can see everything. But when we speak of Gethsemane, we speak, we speak of a pain where Jesus had to show himself now. Would he, nay, he can be vulnerable at the same time. So now he was vulnerable. He was at the point where he was weak. Hence he said, if it's possible, let this cup pass by. So now Jesus had to reveal the pain to me. And it was part of healing. He healed me completely. Now, let me tell you something as I'm continuing with this issue. Now, forgiveness had to hit because he said to me, after this prayer and fasting, I want you to go back and forgive the guys who have raped you. Question is, would you do that if, if it was you? Would you forgive someone who raped you as a child, who decided to take your virginity, your pride? Would you do that? But it's possible because we have a king of kings who's able to heal. And on the last day, now I am seeing things. God is unfolding something to me. He says, wake up because I had to go home. I'm waking up. He said, go to the tap because the place, Eben Fastelagio, Kwaguna Man, Sinje. He says, open them. Yeah, he said, put your hand. Yes, He says, just remain like that. Yes, He says, cold water, kupuma warm water, and then kupuma hot water. Now, I could not contain the pressure that was in my hand. And then he says to me, until you come to a point where you let me, as a God, be God, where your will dies. Because I know that you have been broken. I know your history. I'm aware. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And the plan for me really is not to harm you, but to prosper you. Just allow me to be the God that I am. I was like, what are you talking about? I said, you cannot be a worshiper that has no pain. Pain comes. And when pain comes, there is a testimony. And when there's a testimony... There is what a reflection of me. Go away. So allow it to happen, but go back and forgive the people. So now that was the hardest thing ever because now I have to go back. I would say I was raped. I'm going back to my dad. I'm like, Pastor Makudu, Baba, um, I have a decision that I have made with God. He's asking what, what's happening. I'm like, I have to forgive the guys who raped me. And then he says, how? I said, I, um, I think we have to go back. I'll talk to them. I mean, I'll talk to the police and be like, no, I made a mistake. Can they release them? He cried. He says, but are you sure? I was like, yeah, I am sure. Um, there is a will of God in our lives that God drops in jail out of the blue and trust me you it will work for you because he cannot be great without forgiveness so now i had to go back and lie and be like hey no it did not rape me man no i was lying um instead of them because they they would like sometimes when you when people are arrested they have no booya and speak a different story they have to make a case now but it was like, it just, they decided to just release them. But I went to them and be like, hey, Jesus loves you. He said, I must tell you that he loves you. They were confused. Um, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, I'm here to let you know that I forgive you. Whatever you did was a mistake. I understand. So I forgive you for raping me. I forgive you for taking my virginity. I forgive you for whatever you have done. I'm talking about people that are now, one of them is a pastor. One of them is a minister of God in song now. So now, if I reflect back of where I come from, 
and now. Now I realize that sometimes people will, I mean, God will bring people that will hurt you to the core. Gandhi, these are the people, same people that you have to go back and preach the gospel to. As the Bible says, go to the four corners of the world and preach my gospel. He did not give us a strategy, but he gave us a word that has to be spoken to people. So regardless of how they hurt you, you have to go back to them and be like, hey, there is a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above of all you could ever ask and pray for. You know, now I understood now I began to understand the story Sam would say, okay, but now here I am, now I have to preach the gospel. So I'm trying to say to you in closure, never ever allow the pain to lead you. Because sometimes you might not be sober to an extent where you cannot even hear the voice of God when he speaks. Secondly, forgive those. You know the prayer that says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name, thy kingdom come. We just say it because I think we, it's, it's something that we have been taught from school. But when it says forgive those who have, now that's a huge thing to do, to forgive. And I've realized that maybe we have so many ministers who have been where I am and it's hard for them to minister. Maybe you we have come to a point where you got a divorce and you don't want to forgive the same person who caused the pain in your life. Pella, if I can tell you a story, if it was for men or Nagimi, because I even told my mom, I even declared it, would no, I don't see myself getting married because, I mean, what is the point? Because there's a man who was able to beat you up. But I have to come to a point where I went to my stepdad and be like, hey, dude, I love you because here I am, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman now because of you. Huh? Now, fast forward, my dad comes back at the age of 25. Excited. I'm excited. I'm singing songs of victory. Jesus, you love me too much oh, because my dad is coming back because he was, he is the, he was because he's, he, he died. He was a person whom I have prayed for. Father, give me a father that loves me. A father that would tell me every day that he loves me because no one had told me that, Bumi, I love you. Mina, what I know is that you are useless. You never make it in life. I mean, you're a mistake. I mean, I'm, I'm a mistake, yeah, but But now when he comes back, he tells me every day that he loves me. Again. God has given me two years of a relationship. I mean, you can have it, but he's, he's dying. I remember there was a day he called me and said, where are you? I'm like, no, I was in Jobbik uh, ministering. I'm like, I'm coming. Gandhi, there was a day, that was a day he died. So it's Umbumi who needed love. Six for love everywhere, but God raped. But Jesus showed me how much he loves me. You understand? So I'm trying to say to you, there is a God who is able to heal a person. I mean, here I am sharing a stage, I mean, shared a stage with Omam Lebus Hobela. Um, who? The, you can call them, you can name them, the legends, or oh, Kaya. Um, Tetua got interviews and whatever while I was called a useless human being. I'm trying to say to you there is a God who is able to open doors. Trust the process, trust the pain, forgive. Please, I just want to emphasize that one forgive because if you cannot forgive, God is unable to trust you with breakthroughs that he has forth for you. He cannot hand. He cannot hand the breakthroughs that he has for you. He cannot give them in your hands. He cannot, he cannot sustain you. He cannot open your eyes. He cannot give you the gates of the kingdom. You understand? He cannot trust you as a prophet. He cannot trust you as a preacher, as a healer. As a minister in song, he cannot trust you with that. 
until you had to come to a point where you say, Lord, I forgive this person. And when you do, be genuine. Go to that person and say, hey, I know that we have this and that, but I forgive you. Because some people can be able to hurt you and they'll never come back and say sorry. But do that. Do that for the sake of the kingdom because God has something in store for you. You cannot hold your bread rose because you can't forgive someone. So, yeah, Bumim Tweni um, happened to get married to Fundo Shabalala. Fundo Shabalala gets the, this lady that was hardly broken. So there were certain things that I could not do with my husband because the reflection always comes back. I had to protect myself, but I had to find a husband that understands me. Pray for a husband that loves me. I prayed for a husband that will be patient, you know, and not only that he is patient, but he is able to, I think this guy prays for me (laughs) because God gives him wisdom, you know, to take care of me. God gives him wisdom to understand, okay, sometimes even if you have healed, but reflections will come back. Sometimes you would want to protect yourself, but he would come to a point where he's like, no, you'll be fine. I'm here. I'm still around and I love you. He tells me every day that he loves me. So that is a reflection of God. He tells me every day that, hey, you look beautiful. That is a reflection of God when he says you're beautiful in my eyes. You understand? So God is able to, to change or rather remove the pain and give you what you have been praying for. But trust the process. All of us are born to have pain. I think I believe in that. All of us are born to have a certain journey that we would have and say, no man, if it wasn't with the Lord, where would I be? I was singing a song. I love Ulusanda Beja when he sings, sing Ashonapi, because that is the same God that is able to remove the pain. You know, take care of a person in any way possible. Also, I will, I'd rather invite you guys to come. <laughs> hey, what's that, Nina? On the 2nd of October, I am doing my second, it's a second DVD, but it's a launch. So I'll, I'll be there with Obusu Khadebe, Aubrey M. Um, yeah, well, you'll see them on the poster. Follow me on my Instagram page, Mpumim20. Um, Facebook, Mpumim20. Twitter, Mpumim20. Um, TikTok, Mpumim20. <laughs> Second of October, Gyan Mem. Please do come. It's going to be amazing. Um, normally, my mom teach, to, I mean, taught me to sing Ingoma hymn songs. Hymn songs, I grew up singing hymn songs. So please be there. I will be presenting him songs only. Singing Um Shobo wa muchesu U Pion Jengayala Ah Baningi Bayam Shia Ingabengo Um Shubuga Namina I love this part Ah Nisozenga Shugana No Gitandaga Gaga Jalong yo tanda na na ye Ko na la na ko na le Zuluni nga ye Hi my name is Mpoma Mtsweni Shamalala and I have been through the most